Hey, uh, do you know what we're working on this weekend? Let me guess. The van. Well, yeah, of course. But let me give you a little hint. I'm pretty amped about it. Okay, okay, one more. I'm shocked you haven't figured it out yet. No, I have. I'm just trying not to humor you. Oh, I see. Some resistance. Just roll the intro. Fine. But I don't know if I can't do it alone. What is up my dudes and dudettes? My name is Todd, behind that camera is Colleen, and if you are new to this channel, we make pretty ridiculously informative YouTube videos of us converting this 2022 Sprinter cargo van that you see behind me here. Today is all about electricity. This is phase one of our electrical system install. We're gonna try to break this down into small manageable chunks because well, frankly, the electrical system is probably the most complicated and the most involved system in any van conversion build. It is all about our ceiling today. We're gonna to be doing the pre-wiring for our puck lights as well as the max fan and also burying the cable from our air conditioner into the wall. So let's go ahead and see watts involved. Get it? Watts? Amps times volts? A little electricity joke there? <sighs> okay, let's get to it. Hey friends, welcome to the CAD cave. You can see we have our lights modeled in 3D CAD. This is definitely overkill, but I'm a 21st century engineer and everything has to start off on the computer. In all honesty, I did want to optimize the light's position. We went with six on the overhead ceiling. You could probably get away with three or four right down the middle, but we like the symmetry around the AC and the max fan not pictured here. You can see this really lights up the living space quite well. There are no dark areas or shadows. This is the plan we're gonna go with. Let's see how we're actually gonna wire these in. All right, let's go ahead and look at what we're gonna do here. We have six lights. We wanna wire all of these in parallel again. We're gonna do something very similar to what we did on the porch light video, where we basically run a single cable that goes all the way around. This is one continuous run, and it goes from the two furthest light bulbs. Black is negative, red is positive, and then we're gonna go ahead and just tap into each of these. And then of course, we'll have our little run down to our electrical cabinet here. So we'll have one set of posi taps here, two, three, four, and five. I won't bore you with the details of how I ran every single wire for the lights, but here are some of the important parts. I used the wing cable ties to run the lights along the roof ribs exactly like we did in the porch light video. I also used the same DT connectors. One could argue that these are a little bit overkill, but hey, we really like them and it is our van after all. Lastly, we finished up with shrink tube and a shrink label, which if you watch our videos, no surprises here. Here's a quick look at one of the tap connections for the lights along the roof rib. We had to be a bit strategic as we are running our wires to plan out where we needed shrink tubing to open up the braided sleeve for these tap connections. Again, there are plenty of other solutions out there for this type of thing, but the posi tap is our favorite. If you are using something else, let us and everyone else know in the comments section below. The lights we're using for our build are the classic Ace Goo 12 volt puck lights. We went with the warm white and the black trim color. I went ahead and cut down the leads a little bit and there was a sticker on the black wire designating it was positive 12 volt DC. Of course, we are using the DT connectors again. There are numbers on the side of these suckers and for the entirety of our van build, pin number one is positive and pin number two is negative. For crimping, I found the solid contact version of these connectors work best and this cheap $22 Amazon crimper has been the star of the show. If you're interested in more details on how we assemble these connectors, check out the YouTube short we recently put together. And once there's a plug on each end, the light clicks into place like so. 
Here I'm running the cable down to the electrical cabinet from the main wire. I do a mock with a single lead to get an approximate length and then add about a foot or so for insurance. You can't make a cut wire longer, but you can most certainly shorten it up. Of course we use posi taps here too. Are you starting to see a trend yet? The spike design is far superior to that of a slicing tap, which can cut and break wires. The twist on end has impressive holding force for the tap wire as well. I tried to pull out a wire many, many times and have not been able to do so. I guess that's the power of simple machines like a wedge and screw. You better believe it. We label all our wires. We like these shrink tube ones for their permanence and we secure them in place with the Hellerman Titan edge clip zip ties. Okay, so we have all six of these lights hooked up and you can see we kind of have them dangling down pretty far. Why is that? Well, in order to mount these where we want them in the ceiling and to also be able to pull this connector out of that hole in case we need to service them, this is about the length they need to be and that's something you need to think about. We have these hooked up to our 12 volt power supply. Let's turn them on and see how they look. Wow. Nice, all six lights are on and they look great. This is gonna provide plenty of light in this space. With all six lights hooked up to our temporary power supply, we are pulling 0.866 amps for a total of about 10.5 watts. That's hardly anything. LEDs are an amazing invention. Anyways, buckle up because I'm going to take you on a tour of our wire run. We have these cables going up the cavity in the C-pillar and tying in exactly like we did for the porch lights. As we planned, this main wire run is a single piece main trunk that goes from the first to last light tying in the extra light branches along the way. This continues on towards the front of the van going up and over the roof rib to get around the C-pillar to our center branch that splits to support two more lights. After which it finally heads forward to the last branch, which is our front set of lights and the final termination for that main trunk wire. And that's pretty much a wrap for the lights. We think it turned out pretty clean and I really like being able to run the wires in and out of the wall through these square holes left behind by the factory wire ducting. They sit above the roof supports and a round grommet fits in them surprisingly well. Actually, a couple more tips before we move along. You could obviously use duplex wire here instead of single strands. However, we like how light and flexible the cables are when they're made this way. Sheet metal is basically a surprisingly sharp dull knife, so anytime you are passing wire over it, make sure to take extra care to cover those edges. We like trim lock for this. For our lighting control, we are doing something a bit different. Normally there'd be a dimmer switch of some kind wired into your positive lead, which you'd have to send power from your lights to and through. We are going to be using a four zone RF wireless dimmer system from Lunacy Lighting instead. Now the beauty of this system is you can wire the receivers, you can think of these as switches, at the source right next to your electrical cabinet where the lights get their power from either a fuse or a breaker. And then you run a separate 12 to 24 volt DC low amp circuit to where you want the capacitive touch switch. Each switch can control four zones and you can teach multiple switches to the same receivers as I'm doing here. The lights will flash quick, letting you know that you Gucci. And here's a quick demo of the system. Tap to turn off the lights. The nice thing is that the touchpad is lit and responsive. Tap to turn on the lights. You'll press and hold to either increase or dim. Each receiver will remember the last lighting setting, so no need to worry about that. And one more time with the lights off as we fade into the next clip. Here I'm, whoops, you didn't see that. Running the wire for the touchpad that will be on the passenger side of the van. I will say this again that it's really nice not to have to run four zones worth of lighting cables over here to switch them, just one single circuit to power it up. In case you haven't noticed, I really like using these runs along the roof supports. With the wing cable ties, it's a great way to pass wires back and forth from one side of the van to the other. So this is eventually pretty close to where our main dimmer touchpad will be mounted. I have it stuck on with a 3M command strip temporarily. The flare space trim ring will come to about here, so this leaves a nice pocket behind the panel for it to be flush mounted. We ran a wire between the two panels and up the C-pillar, following the porch light wires until it branches off across the roof support to the other side of the van. 
It's then nicely labeled and follows the other light wires down the same path to the electrical cabinet. For the AC wiring run, we have this huge Anderson connector that we need to take care of. We are going to machine a bracket that mounts to the side of our AC brackets to hold this up and out of the way. Here's a quick spin of the rad cad. Notice the fillets and chamfers? Anyways, let's machine this puppy. Hmm, speaking of puppies, Gizmo, hit us with the beat. get the most out of our bracket, we do have to shorten the cable a bit. I ended up stripping off the jacket and cutting down about 7 inches. Since it's a standard Anderson 120 amp 4 gauge plug contact, you can find these pretty much anywhere online. I bought mine from McMaster Car, which is basically an engineer's Toys R Us. I used my Temco TH1818 to crimp these on and used a piece of marine grade shrink tubing to finish everything off. And here's how everything looks all tidied up. I did find the small connector and pin type, but figured it would just be easier to simply loop it and hold it in place with another piece of large shrink tubing. Here is everything mounted to the bracket and the aircon wire continues along the roof rib to a hole we drilled with a one inch ATI aerospace hole saw. We put a grommet in there to protect the wire against the sharp edges and continued down and towards the rear of the van. There's a small opening in the D pillar that we are able to snake the wire down and through that allows us to get to the lower bay and eventually into our electrical cabinet over the driver's side wheel well. For the max fan power, this one is pretty quick and simple. Again, with the DT connectors, we used the plastic bracket and put a threaded insert into our max fan inner support mounting system to hold it in place. We continue along the roof rib and through one of those square holes again. We have a few more wires to run in this direction, so we did end up opening another hole in the C pillar. If you want to see some more detail about how we do this, check out the wire rerouting video. Also, you may have noticed we're using different colored jackets on these wires. We are using white for lights, blue for accessories, and red for audio cables so far. Just another way to keep things serviceable. And patriotic now that I look at it. Alright friends, we're going to pause here for a moment and talk about some of these unique products we're using today that you may have not seen on other van conversion videos on the YouTubes. First up is, let me see if I can find it, oh there it is, the Posi Tap. This became one of our favorite products on the porch light install video and it is a fantastic solution for creating branch circuits, which is exactly what we're doing on the overhead lighting situation today. What you've probably seen instead is this little guy, this is a Wago 221 lever nut. I like these as well but the reason why the posi tap made it on our van instead is because you actually don't need to cut the wires to create a branch circuit with this guy which i feel is overall a much cleaner solution next up is the dt plug you've seen these on the porch light install video as well this is an automotive grade ip68 13 amp rated connector which is great for your lower amp connections that need to be serviceable over the lifetime of the van like our light here if i were to use a cheaper solution i would probably go back to wago and use the 221 inline lever nut you have one connection on one side going out to the other side and you'd have one for positive and one for negative and you'll save a few bucks there Last but certainly not least, 
is the heart and soul of our lighting solution. This is made by a company called Lunacy Lighting. These two components communicate wirelessly to one another. This one acts as the switch where you run power in and then power out to your lights. And then this one controls it. You do have to run a separate circuit here, but it's very low amp draw, only 20 milliamps. And then it has four distinct zones, which have dimming functionality built in. It's 256 step dimming, which is super smooth. We're really excited to use this in our van. Let me ask you something, friends. Are you afraid of the dark? Well, no need to worry because we have our van lights installed now. That wraps up another episode in the Adventure Van Build Series. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you like what we are doing, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video or just wanna shoot the shoot, go ahead and drop those comments in the comments section below. And on your way down there, don't forget to slap that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. No, no, I have. <laughs> no, no. Not seen another van can video. All right, cut.